Good afternoon. In the previous video, we made the box go down a straight conveyor belt. So now let's do a rounded corner conveyor belt. So the first thing we need to do is add the conveyor belt in machines. So let's go machines, right click, add machine, CAD library, and let's go under conveyor belts, fixtures, conveyor, and then let's find the round portion to this. So now that we have this in, if you remember from the previous video, we did 700 for the Z height. And let's bring this over and let's rotate this around. So let's go under the R and let's go 180 degrees. And let's bring this so it's really close. And then we can go to the top view and line it up. Make sure they're nice numbers. Good. And then negative 985 looks like it's lining up as well. Next, let's give it a name. So let's go conveyor belt, hit apply. So now we have our conveyor belt round. Let's right click on it, add link. And we're gonna go from the CAD file because if you remember from the previous video, we exported the part box. And let's go box number one. There's our box number one. Now before we change anything, we're going to have to now move the motor so that's in the center or the radius of this round portion. So let's go to general, and then let's go edit axis origin, and you'll see the actual motor. We need to bring this out. And I think it was about 900 millimeters to the center of this object. So the actual center on here is actually on the rail here. So we went out another 900 for our object. And now we need to put our box into place. So we need to move our linked CAD and we want to click our box and then we're going to move it close to our object. So our center to center here was about 506 to 511 millimeters. So if we go about 256 plus our 900, and we should have about 1155 to the center. So now that it's centered on this, and we're going to come right into the edge here. Now that we have this in place, let's just double check that the height is correct. So the height that we had on our previous video was 195. Make sure that we are in line. There we go. So we are now in line with our other object. So it's going to end our circular path along this right here. Let's go to motion and we are going to do a device IO control. And we're going to do a rotary this time. And we're going to have the same amount of outputs and inputs. So let's just go right down the line and start adding our controller number one. And this one, IO tag, we're going to go digital out number two, digital out part number two, and we're going to have off. And then this is going to be our digital in number three, and then our digital in number four, and then value is going to be on. So now we need to know the location. So if we go location, so zero is that, and then let's go negative 90. So no negative 90 goes to the correct place as well. Okay, so we have zero and then negative 90. So let's go in here. So digital three, this one's gonna be our, our negative 90 position, and then this is gonna be our zero position. So when we're at here, up here, it's gonna be digital control number three. So when we're at there, digital output number three is gonna be tested, and then this one is gonna be digital output number one. Okay, let's test this out, see how it looks. So let's go to Teach, add simulation program, and we'll call this round conveyor. And we're going to instruction. We're going to go digital number two on. And let's see what we're doing. So let's bring up the actual conveyor belt here. So negative 90, which is right here, should be off. So let's switch this from on to off. And let's go wait. And we're going to wait until we get to that point, which is digital number three. So digital input number three, location negative 90. And we're going to wait till that's on. 
and then we're going to do a wait command of one second after that happens and then we're going to go to digital output number two and we're going to turn it on which will bring it to zero which is down here and then we're going to wait until that happens so let's go to wait digital four is on and let's do a loop on this so we're going to go to jump label and then up top here we're going to do a jump to label one and we're going to move this up to position number one and let's run this and see what it looks like and now it's moving down that corner and then it's going to come back so now we got to mess with the speed so that it looks like it's going to go down the conveyor belt and then it's going to warp back. So let's stop this and then let's go to speed. So let's figure out what speed is what. So if I go say double the speed 30 degrees per second, hit apply and we run this and see which direction it is. So that looks about the same speed. And that's definitely going faster. Okay, so 30 is going down that way, and then 15 is back. So we need to up this speed. So let's kick it up to three or 4,000 degrees per second, and then let's hit apply, and then we can run this. So it warps back, and then it runs through. Okay. So now that we have our warp, to be correct and our conveyor belt in the next video we're going to set this up so it looks like it's a continuous path